Resilience, the ability to recover from or adjust easily to misfortune or change. You gotta have it, it's gonna happen, but man, we gotta excel it. The cracks of living life, playing in the NFL, fill them with gold, man. It's Divisional Playoff Weekend in the NFL and time for another edition of the Mike McCarthy Show powered by Reliant Energy inside the Globe Life Studio here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones along with Cowboys coach Mike McCarthy as the Cowboys head to San Francisco take on the 49ers in the second round of the playoffs. Coach, big win on Monday night over Tampa Bay. Things happen very quick this week uh, with uh, San Francisco on the docket. you got to feel good about where this team is going into the second round after what you saw on Monday. Oh yeah, definitely. I feel I feel like we've had an excellent week of preparation. Feel great about not only where we are, but who we are. I think it's important uh, this time of year. We all understand that playoff football is about you know one game, one game only, and you know our, our guys get that. I think you know you have, after you get that first playoff win, get over that first threshold. Uh, you, you know now you have clear understanding of the speed of the game and how how important it is to get up and exceed the, the opponent and the speed of the game and. You know, that'll be a big part of this Sunday afternoon. Well, then uh, what a matchup this is against the 49ers, what you'd expect in this uh, round of the playoffs. But here you got your team averaging on offense 33 points a game. The Niners uh, over the last 11 games. Niners similarly 31 points the last uh, 11 games. Uh, for Dak and the way he played in that game against Tampa Bay, it's something that we've seen ever since he's come back from injury, really. Oh, no doubt about it. I, I think you're looking at two teams that are playing extremely well, uh, playing their best football of the season, and that, that's what you want. Um, you know, it's really, it's a, this is a heavyweight battle. Uh, this will be a he heavyweight showdown. And, you know, as far as, you know, how we play in, on, on offense and, in, you know, particularly against their defense, uh, we're really looking forward to this opportunity. All right, uh, tell me about D'Amico Ryan's defense because you got the, some big name guys, first team all pro guys at all three levels of that defense, uh, starting with Nick Bosa and then Fred Warner, Tulanoa Hufanga as a safety in the, in, at the back end. They, they got some players, but what, what do you expect when you see their defense? Well, you're going to know right where they are. I mean, that, that's one thing. I mean, they're, they're, their front variation is not as high as, as, as say, a, say, a Philadelphia or, or even Tampa. So, uh, but it's very talented, and like you've already stated, they have really good players on all three levels. Uh, so you know it's it's important that you know we really hit our aim at spots. We got to be really on our aim at spots in both the you know blocking unit and the pass protection unit. Uh, and I think really as far as the route running, we got we got to you know we got to jump out of our shoes on our releases and make sure we're ripping it ripping at the breaking points and and keeping our time clock on time because they're going to try to disrupt that. I mean that's that's the that's why you play the game. So uh, I think this is going to be a, a great contest and matchup for us. Uh, how about your offensive line, how they played against Tampa? Of course, you get midway through that game, you lose Jason Peters, you just slide Tyler Smith out. Connor McGovern, a guy that you're using in a very versatile way as a fullback, as a tight end, he goes right back into left guard. And be oddish back as well. O-line variation <laughs> in, uh, in our lineup seems to be the, you know, the method of our, our success. Uh, clearly, we've been, we've been working different combinations all, all year. It definitely, but, but, you know, we had, you can see the benefits of it. Uh, against Tampa Bay where we were able to make those adjustments and it, and it was seamless. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate to see Jason, you know, go through an injury like any of your players, but, you know, the, the ability for Connor to jump in there and my goodness, what else can you say about Tyler Smith as a, as a rookie? Not only is he playing extremely well, but his versatility is unique, particularly for a man of his age. All right, we're just getting started on this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show. Up next, it's David Moore of the Dallas Morning News. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, is brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Ford, Ford F-Series, the best-selling truck in Texas. The University of North Texas, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. And by Reliant, an NRG company. 
Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, inside the Globe Live studio here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones now joined by David Moore of the Dallas Morning News, SportsDayDFW.com. He's been covering this team for so long. You remember all of those great playoff matchups with the Niners. I love it when Dallas plays San Francisco in the postseason. Ninth meeting overall. You've seen a lot of them, David. Um, very memorable and, and, and really the, the scope of the, of the Cowboys' postseason history, right? You, you had the early, you had uh, the catch, the Dwight Clark over, uh, you know, Everson, Everson. Walls. Um, you've had those in the 90s, those two going back and forth, where, where everyone talked about while they didn't meet for the Super Bowl, it was just conventional wisdom that the winner of that game would go on to win the Super Bowl. And it was billed as a Super Bowl during that run in, in the 90s as well. Uh, you go back to that, uh, the, the games, uh, the, the Cowboys won there. Again, their last road victory before Tampa Bay was in San Francisco in the 92 championship game. Um, but also, uh, one of the more memorable games was their loss there, where they fell behind 21-0 and came back, and that was as good of a game as I think uh, I saw there. Yep, and as good a game as Troy Aikman played in his career, yeah. that, that comeback. Okay, so fast forward to last year, and what I was struck by by that San Francisco team when they came on the field even at AT&T Stadium, they reminded me of the 90s Cowboys, their confidence level coming into that game. Where do you sense being in the locker room and talking to these players, the confidence level of this team is coming off the big win last week against Tampa? I, I think on top of the big win, you're, you're exactly right. That big win does a lot. Uh, but also based on what they did in the regular season. And, and I know a lot of fans focused on what didn't happen in the final two games or, or how they looked over the course of the final four to five weeks, discounting the win over Philadelphia. But this team won more games against teams with a winning record or in the playoffs than they did last year. Um, and then they followed that up with their most dominant uh, postseason performance in 12 years. Uh, I, I think confidence is high. As we talked about before, this is the first time in 15 years they've been in the playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons. That counts for something because the nucleus of this team, the vast majority of this team was together last year and know what they didn't do, know what they didn't do physically, uh, the, not being, the intensity level that's needed. Uh, you saw that in the Tampa Bay game. How confident is the kicker coming into this game? And how well, confident is the team in Brett Maher? Well, that's, an, that, that's another question. And it, it really only Brett Maher can answer this. Everyone is speculating how he'll respond, what the Cowboys should do, what's the best environment to put him in. Should they even put him back out there? It, this is all on Brett Maher and how he handles it. Um, they, they say they're confident. I, I thought Dak Prescott had one of the best responses was, hey, look how bad I played in Washington and what I came back to do against Tampa Bay. Brett Maher is going to do the same thing. We'll see, and we'll see very early in the game what the coaching staff thinks he can do as well with maybe some decisions they're faced with on positions on the field. How confident is David Moore that he will be back for another season on the Mike McCarthy Show next year? I am more confident that Mike McCarthy will be back for the Mike McCarthy show <laughs> than uh, I think I am, but I, I, I am available if, okay. if anyone wants. All right, a uh, free agent in the offseason. We'll see, we'll track that during the offseason. Our thanks to David and the Mike McCarthy show continues in a moment. How about we check in on one of those rookie tight ends when we come back? This segment is brought to you by Blockchain.com. Trusted by millions. Trusted by America's team. Jake Ferguson, tight end. It's gone extremely fast and slow at the same time. I know that doesn't really make sense, but it feels like fall camp was years ago. And like I go back and we watch this Tampa tape from the first game and I was like, I look at myself and I watch some of the plays, I'm like, what was I doing? Um, up until that Giants game where I played, um, I didn't really, I would watch the tape and I was like, man, like, I look like a rookie. And just kind of little stuff like that, like, good play here and there, but there's also some bad sprinkled in. And then um, just the way I kind of carry myself throughout the game and finishing blocks and stuff like that and just, just looking like I act, like I belong is something that I think like I now watch this tape and I'm like okay like like I'm good like there's definitely still a lot more work to do and 
stuff I want to get done and where I want to be. But um, I'm definitely, I think I'm making the right steps. Everywhere, I, literally every, every aspect of the game, whether it be off the field or on the field, um, run blocking, pass, pass catching, route running, anything. I think uh, just being able to polish that kind of stuff up and um, there, are little, there are little spurts where it's looking really good. Um, I do this really well, um, but the next time it might not be as well. And it's just polishing that up, consistency, and being able to do that every play, every rep, um, no matter what the scenario is. I think the big thing is we know each other really well. Um, I know if something happens to P, he's probably gonna hang his head a little bit and he's gonna take a little bit of nudging and he's gonna be thinking about it a lot and he's gonna be that guy who, hey, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to talk to this guy a little bit and get him up. And then like Dalton on the other hand, he's just gonna be pissed and he's gonna be neutral and he's not gonna let it get to him, but you're gonna see it throughout his play. Like he's, I don't need to say anything to him. And just being able to know those guys just because we've hung out with each other off the field and then also in our meeting room knowing those guys and just how they respond to stuff and how they carry themselves and just like the little things. Cowboys looking for more big things out of Jake Ferguson and now we've got Will McClay to break down what the 49ers have on offense and defense. Let's start on offense and how about the guy that they uh, picked up just before midseason. That would be one Christian McCaffrey to start with. Yeah, he's given them 10 touchdowns running and passing. Really good running back here. What you're going to see is his ability in their run scheme. They like to do cutbacks, like to get good angles for the blockers. You see him here with his vision. He stretches it. Defense thinks they got him. Nope, you got to watch the back door. His ability to accelerate, get to the second level, hard man to tackle there. So there is a running back, and he'll line up in the slot as well. Yeah, and you know, they do a great job of using their personnel. You see it here. They have McCaffrey in the slot, Debo in the backfield, trying to find matchups. Great matchup for McCaffrey, linebacker, one-on-one. -on -one. Runs an option right here, sets him up. He's got over 50 catches since he's been there as well. And, of course, one of the big stories is the unbeaten record of the rookie quarterback, and that would be Brock Purdy out of Iowa State, one of his favorite targets, a tight end out of Iowa, George Kittle. I tell you what, Kittle's happy that Purdy's playing. His production's increased. He's got 11 receiving touchdowns. You look at him here, Miami's going to bring some pressure. He stands in the face of pressure, but he knows to find Kittle. Kittle's going to make the catch and big plays for him from the tight end position. All right, and then how about Debo Samuel and how they use him? All over the place, just get the ball in his hands. Here you'll see him. They like to run screens. He's lined up in the slot here. What they're going to do is get the ball in his hands. Athletic lineman, they get out front, get a body on a body, and then he's a hard man to tackle in space. Got to know where he is. All right, when you look at the 49ers on the defensive side of the football, Nick Bosa has 18 and a half sacks. Got another first round draft pick in Eric Armstead, who's come back from injury lately and is really producing too. Yeah, and they do a great job of getting pressure with four and doing some things in the back end, but you got to have guys, and these two guys are the cogs right here. You got Armstead, who's going to defeat two blockers here, and then you got Bosa. They got a tight end on Bosa. Geno says to heck with it. Now, there we go, because of the pressure. And, oh, by the way, at the linebacker position, they've got an all-pro back there, too, in Fred Warner. Fred Warner, great coverage player, leads him in tackle, but he's also very good and instinctive and so fast in the run game. You see him here and beat the back to the spot, a very, very sure tackler. Just an idea of what the Cowboys are facing in these 49ers on offense and defense, thanks to Will McClay. And the coach rejoins us in just a moment here on the Mike McCarthy Show. This segment was brought to you by Blockchain.com. Trusted by millions. Trusted by America's team. This segment is brought to you by Winstar World Casino and Resort, the casino of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy here inside the Globe Live studio. The coach rejoins us. We talk about this matchup with the Niners. And how about the quarterbacks in this game? When you look at Brock Purdy and where he's come in a very short time, and I compare it with Dak Prescott, very similar in their paths to the NFL, very successful in college. In fact, the top national ranking in their respective colleges they led them to as, as quarterbacks. Then the rookie year, not one but two injuries, and they get an opportunity and make the most of it. What do you see out of Brock Purdy uh, on film that has impressed you the most? I, I've been saying it all week, but I, th I think it's the right description. You know, I, you see you see a young man that's very instinctive. You know, he plays the position. He's a he's a football player. I mean, he's he's not just a drop back passer. He can move. You can see the confidence. 
that he has with his instincts, particularly when he transitions to the scramble drill. Uh, his awareness of defense is, you know, I, I think he's has a really good understanding, obviously, how their scheme is attacking the defense, and and he reacts accordingly. And and the thing that really jumps off of the video, from 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 my perspective, is his confidence. I mean, he's playing the position at a very high level of confidence, especially for a young man. So, I mean, he's had he's had a heck of a run. Sound like you were describing Dak Prescott too. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> I, I actually just took the notes from 2016. <laughs> from 2016. Uh, all right. Micah set the tone for that game, like first play of the game uh, with a tackle in the, in the backfield. And uh, the way your defense played against Tampa Bay, such a key in that game and all season long for you. you got to love the way they're playing right now. No doubt about it. I, I, I felt our defense really set the table for us against Tampa Monday night. And it definitely started with Micah on that first play. Uh, you know, just the ability to have those three and outs uh, was so big for us. Obviously, you know, we had the three and out on the first series offensively, but then once we got into a rhythm, and you know, and that's when we're at our best. Uh, you know, the time possession was was a was a big focal point going into the game, and you know, we definitely hit that in the first half and had the long drives. But you know, most importantly on offense, we were finishing uh, with touchdowns. But yes, Mike and our defense, you know, they they really set the tempo, and you know, especially keeping keeping that zero on the board as long as they did. I know you have great respect for Kyle Shanahan, uh, Christian McCaffrey. Obvious, it's obvious the impact he's had on this team. What way has he has he impacted this team the most? Do you think? Well, he just he's given them a number another dynamic playmaker and I think Kyle does as, as good as job or best in the business as far as utilizing the playmakers I mean he really challenges it schematically uh, particularly in the run game you know the, the stress stress point of the C gap and the, in the run force and the misdirection that comes off of that and the, the ability to, to utilize his, his playmakers from different locations so this will be a, this will be an excellent challenge for us and another guy that you got to always keep an eye on is Debo Samuel where yeah, he's lining yeah, up no doubt I think I mean, you talk about two dynamic guys that can do it from the backfield they can do it on the perimeter you know you know, one thing I've always looked at from perimeter players, you know, different like if you'd say C.D. Lamb for us, and you, you know, way we've used him in the past. But you know, when you can play all four spots, you can play from the backfield, you know, play the one, two, and three position, you know, as a perimeter player, that's a huge asset. How big was it getting Jonathan Hankins back? He even got a sack in the game against Tampa. Well, that's it. That, that's what Jonathan does. You know, you. you he just calms everything down in there. So uh, I, I think definitely Leighton Van Der Esten and Anthony Barr really, 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 really appreciated having them back. So, yeah, I, I really liked the look of our defense last, last week, and I thought Jonathan was big in the run defense. All right, we wrap up this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show in just a moment. This segment was brought to you by Windstar World Casino and Resort, the casino of the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are heading to Santa Clara to take on the 49ers in the divisional round of the playoffs. Come out to Miller Lighthouse at AT&T Stadium for a free divisional watch party on Sunday. Gates open at 4 o'clock. Kickoff is at 5.30. For more info, visit DallasCowboys.com slash playoffs. Final couple of minutes here of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. And my unsung star this week is sort of unsung stars. And it's sort of abstract. It is position flex. Among your safeties in particular, J. Ron Curse, mm -hmm. uh, you, you look at Donovan Wilson, Malik Hooker, Israel Mukwamu, uh, played a big role in last week's game against Tampa Bay, and especially against the San Francisco offense. How big is it to have versatile safeties like you have? Well, as we talked earlier, I mean, when you look at the versatility that San Francisco has in their offensive perimeter group, to, to be able to combat that with a very versatile defensive perimeter group is, is, is a huge asset, and it's definitely something that will be tested. I mean, if you look at our safety group, their ability not only to play the, you know, the, open, the open safety, the down safety, you know, the, the, the deep safety, also the nickel, you know, the dime. So, I mean, it, it gives us great flexibility because, you know, matchups and, and playing this, this type of offense with this much firepower, it's it's definitely needed. All right, and, and some other unsung stars too. Behind the scenes here on the Mike McCarthy Show all season. How about Roxanne Medina, the producer of this show? Unbelievable, one of a kind. She does a tremendous job. Um, can't say enough about Roxanne, not only for the show, but also what she does for our highlight films. And Thank you, Roxanne. Th there, you, there you go. And by the way, as we have the big finish here, another, another unsung star is behind the camera here with the big finish, Jasmine Marshall as well. And you always loved her big finishes to the Mike McCarthy Show with that camera move, right? It, it's the highlight of my week, and I just can't wait to see what Jasmine's going to do next. All right, here Thank she you, Jasmine. goes. Jasmine Marshall, the unsung star of the Mike McCarthy Show. Enjoy the game. It should be a 
great one in Santa Clara. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, was brought to you by Blockchain.com. Trusted by millions, trusted by America's team. Ford, Ford F-Series, the best-selling truck in Texas. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl.